I'm here, and this is Jared, and this is Kid Talk. Kid Talk is where we interview people who make games, design games, and pretty much anyone who likes games. Yeah, and today we're interviewing T with Haba. Hi. Hi. Hello. How's your day been? Short so far. I actually just woke up. <laughs> oh. Since you are in Germany. No, no I know. Well, I feel like I'm in Germany sometimes. I'm in Oregon. So I'm in Portland, Oregon, over on the West Coast. So yeah. it's a little the after other, 11. The other side of Haba is in Germany. That's right. The most of the Haba, US, the Haba USA team, most of that Haba USA team is in New York. Uh, so they're a little closer to Germany for meetings and shipping and things like that. And then I'm all the way over in Oregon in, at Portland because I just really like it out here. So this is where I live. So I get to work remote, but it means time zones. I work lots of weird hours. <laughs> What's it like working for Hava USA? Uh, it's awesome. It's one of the things that I didn't think... I would ever be able to do, excuse me. I really, really like Haba and I like their games and I have nieces and nephews and I would play and buy Haba games with them, like for them and play them with them. And it was always awesome. And so when Haba had the job opening for the job that I have now, uh, I applied and I was super excited when I got it. And I'm still super excited that I have it. Um, it's a lot of fun. I get to play games. I get to share games with families and folks like you. Uh, and I also just get to kind of show people that you don't have to be a kid to have fun playing games and not all games that we have are for kids. Like you can have fun. I'm sure you have fun playing with your parents, our games and your parents have fun playing our games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you don't have to be, you know, six or seven to, like, Rhino Hero, right? Yeah, so. yeah, because I, if I, because I'm going to be eight, and I will still play Rhino Hero. That's right, yeah, and you're, and both of you like Rhino Hero still, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and our entire family likes Rhino Hero, and half of it isn't kids. See, that's a good point, and that's one of the and things that I really like. <laughs> and he's too Three years older than me. And you just had a birthday, too. <laughs> Four years older now. <gasps> Four yeah, years older years now. Older. Well, happy birthday. Belated happy birthday to both of you, actually, because I missed, I missed your birthday in May, too, apparently. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so working for Hava is really fun. It's, it's because of where I choose to live, uh, time zones are a little tricky, but I like that. I like traveling a lot. I like going to Germany. I like when I get to go to New York. I like when I get to travel to shows. Um, this year's a little different. I'm not traveling as much. Instead, I'm doing video calls and I have to do them with people that are all around the world at all different times. And so that's why it gets a little crazy and I, my sleep gets a little messed up. Uh, so for example, I was on meetings last night until my 3 a.m. Uh, with Germany and the UK because we're planning some stuff for UK Games Expo. So to make that happen and make that work, it means lots of weird hours uh, this year. Not normal. It's not normal that we're doing so many weird <laughs> meetings and calls at different hours. So yeah. How many Haba games would you say you have? Or what's your favorite Haba game? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a tough question. So I actually have behind me, these are all the Haba games that we have available, like for sale right now from our catalog. And so I think we have 70 in the catalog right now. But then I have a secret Haba stash over there of Haba games that are either out of print so we don't sell them anymore, or we um, never sold them. Like they're special ones that Germany made and Germany sent them to me to see if I want to bring them to the yes. So I have some over there that like America's never seen. Uh, and then I also have ones that are coming soon. So they're secret. Uh, and then I have ones that are, this is kind of cool. So when we're going to make a game, 
we're going to, we're, when we're going to sell it in the U S they send me what is called, Oh, I'm, I'm blanking right now, but they, Oh, a white box copy. They send me a proof copy or a white box copy of the game and everything in it is handmade. So if it has, um, wooden pieces in it, there's somebody who makes the wooden pieces by hand instead of doing it with the big machines at the factory. Um, and so I have those copies of some games that have already come out because they're, they're special, right? They're, they're, they're unique. Um, and so I have some of those over there. So as far as how many Hava games I have, I think currently sitting around me, I probably have around 150 Hava games. <laughs> That's a lot. There's a lot of yellow boxes. But what, um, what was your favorite Hava game that you have? That's a tough question. That is sort of a mean question because there's so many good ones and they're so they're so fun for different types of game nights, you know? Um, like I have like 50 favorites out of all of these games. Yeah, see? So you totally understand. Um, oof. I think if we're going to say what is my favorite for like a quick fun, maybe kind of silly game. I still love Rhino Hero Super Battle. I really yeah. like building the tower with the multiple levels. And that like, one's really fun. Yeah, my linking fav- them together. My favorite horror game would probably be Cook Cats. Cook Cats? I heard Cook Cats is being is pretty popular in your house right now. Mm-hmm. I like what a Quazoo. You- a quasu is really good with the gems and the the sliding waterfall. Mm-hmm. What what do you like about cloak cats? It's just fun how you need to figure out which person has which mask cards, mm-hmm. and it's actually kind of hard to figure out because sometimes that card you don't you haven't showed off yet. Yeah, it's you have to figure it out by thinking about what you haven't seen instead and of what you have seen. seen. Yeah, and that one messes me up when I play Cloak Cat. Sometimes I'm so focused on what I've seen, I forget to say, wait a minute, we've played only cats and none of them are yellow. So somebody's probably got a yellow cat, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. What about Aquazu? What's your favorite thing about Aquazu? Um, I like the story behind it. Like where they're trying to hide their gems from the people who are trying to come and take the gems. Mm-hmm. And I also like how you made like a giant water dragon blocking the waterfall. Yeah. And how it's- you made it so that the tail can't hold all the water. So water just drips down. Yeah, it's it's good. It's very it's a good story, and the way that they made it work in the board game with the with the moving dragon and the water actually like hiding or showing more of the board is super cool. I think when I first when they first I didn't work for Haba when that came out, and so when I first got it, I was so impressed. I was like, "This is awesome!" And now. Now that I work here, I get to say that all the time when they show me prototypes. They show me prototypes of what they're working on, and I'm like, oh, that's got to be so cool. But so. Cool Cats, when we got it, I was just like, this reminds me of a game. And then just now I realized it reminded me of um, best – no, not – yeah, guess who. Guess who. Yeah, it does. It. And when I was a kiddo, I loved guess who, but I was always like – it was kind of, I don't know, at a certain point, like you kind of can memorize guess who a little bit and like what questions to ask. So I like with Cloak Cats that one, you can play with more players. And then two, because you're, you're playing the cards to figure out the information, it's different every time, right? You yeah. can't just ask the same like, oh, are they wearing glasses, right? So we haven't, play- we haven't played guess who in like, we haven't played it in like a year. Well, you have all those other games to play now. We haven't even played it this year. And it's been like uh, seven months. August is the eighth month. Okay, eighth month. Eight months. I always memorize when my birth month is. It's important. It's an so important one to remember. There is 
9, 10, 11, 12. Four more months. You got it. Four more months in 2020. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> almost the end, but not almost the end. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. There's still some cool stuff that's going to come out, though, in 2020. Have you heard about some of the new stuff that we have coming out for this no. year? No. Yeah. But I do know you, you put out like 50 games a year. We do. Well, Germany does. How USA doesn't always put out everything that Germany puts out because sometimes the games that they put out wouldn't really do well in the U.S. Um, there's certain games that the Euro- Europeans like more than the u.s does so for example for some reason i don't know why europeans really like games that have witches in them but in the u.s whenever we bring a witch game over it just doesn't do well Hmm. it's very weird it's very but in america we really like rhino hero super battle and any games that have oh sorry zine is getting up from her nap um we like games that have like super battle and and superheroes and anything like rhino hero and that kind of stuff we really like those games whereas in europe they're just kind of like it's a rhino that climbs buildings you know so it's very interesting different countries like different games and i think a lot of it just comes from kind of the history of the of those countries or like what is popular for those countries like some countries, superheroes, like Marvel superheroes or, or DC superheroes, like Batman and Superman and Iron Man and all those, are a lot more popular than in other countries. So I think, I think that's kind of related, right? Hmm. Yeah. We have, I think, we have two Avengers games. One, there's one right here and then one somewhere. You just got a new one for your birthday, didn't you? That's Thanos Rising right there. We That's won that, yeah. it the first time. Yeah, you're not supposed to win the Infinity War. That's what happened in the <laughs> movies, and we, like... We I made said, it backwards. Yeah, I said that we rewrote history. I mean, that's kind of one of the fun things that you could do with games, though, is you can change or rewrite the history, especially when they're games about movies or, like, historical events or things like that, right? If you win it when, you're, when in the movies it was lost... It's really cool. And we won it the first time. That's pretty we, impressive. Why well, could Rhino Hero? It's supposed to be if you knock down the building, but there is like one way. There's no way you can knock down the building. Yeah. How, what's the one way? Run out of walls. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. If, you, if you're if you so good at Rhino Hero, if you all work together to make it kind of stable, you can play and get it where you don't run out of walls. And then the person who wins, if, well, are you talking normal Rhino Hero or Super Battle? Normal Rhino Hero or Super Battle. Actually, our friend Klein, which is actually our cousin. Um, yeah. She used Rhino Hero and Rhino Hero Super Battle and stacked all of the walls up. Yeah, we tried wow. making it so that it could touch the ceiling. It fell down before we could do that. We actually have a new Rhino Hero that we just announced. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it would help with the stacking to get to the ceiling. But yeah. you, I, don't, I don't know if you two would enjoy playing it as much because it's meant for ages two and up. So it's Rhino Hero Jr. is, oh. is going to be coming next year. And that one we designed for younger gamers so like i said two and up but it's it will use really sturdy cardboard that's like toddler safe um and you'll like slot the walls together so instead of them being cards that you fold in half it'll just be two boards that you slot together and then those will be a really good sturdy base if you want to combine them and you put those down first as the base and then you do like super battle on top of that and then you could you could do normal Rhino Hero on top of that. And then maybe you could get to the ceiling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one, that one's going to come out next year. And it has a couple different ways to play. One of it, which is like you build the tower and you just work together to build the tower. And then there's a way to play where you're trying to build the tower, but you're not really doing it competitively. Kind of like the normal Rhino Hero. 
Have you all had a chance yet to play any of the other Hobbit games? Yeah. Um, we've played... We've played... Uh, Bubba and me have played Gods of the Vikings. Now we have the Vikings. Um, Iquazu, Cloak Cats. Yeah. D- have you played Karuba yet? No. No? We haven't okay. unboxed it. You haven't unboxed it yet oh got it okay because you do the unboxing videos and then you can play them after you recorded the unboxing video Mm -hmm. yeah we're trying to get our new set yeah our new set for like the back so it looks better it's also so that we don't have to like worry about the equipment in our kitchen we're gonna do it like five minutes away from here Got it. Okay. So you won't have to like set up and, and tear down in your kitchen when you want to eat dinner or record something. Yeah. That would be nice. I had, when I used to make YouTube videos, that was my problem is if we wanted to eat dinner, we would have to like clear out all the studio equipment or be lazy and just shove it over to the side <laughs> and then have dinner. Um, and then if we wanted to do a streamer video, we had to set it all up again. So that took a long time. But, but um, why, why was your YouTube channel called The One Tar? Well, um, because you'll learn this soon, or if you haven't already, uh, when you pick a username, it kind of sticks with you forever. Uh, and so at some point, I picked the username The One Tar because Tar is my initials. So T is my first name, A is for my middle name, and R is for my old last name before I got married. Um, and so uh, I was the one, I was the one of me. There is only one me. And so when I made that username, that's, that was what I did. And then when I needed a YouTube channel username, I just used that one because that's what I had been using, you know, for a long time. So that's what it was. But even after I got married, I kept my old, my maiden name, my old married name, or my old single name, I actually made it part of my middle name. So I still technically am the one Tar, but I also now have another name after that. So Yeah. Why did you stop making really funny videos? Uh, partly because... Uh, I, Steve and I moved to Portland, my husband, Steve and I moved to Portland and it became hard to find the time in the moving and the, and, and me getting a new job, uh, and working and, and things like that. And then by the time I thought we got settled in Portland and I had a new job, um, we had started making streams. So we had started streaming with, uh, playing board games and it was, it was a lot more fun to stream than to make edited videos because when Steve and I would stream one, Steve is with me and we're having fun and we're playing a game and we love playing games, but then we would have this chat audience that would come and watch us and hang out in the chat and we would get to talk to them. And so every night that we stream every week when we stream we started with once a week and then we started doing twice a week because we had so much fun hanging out with those people and chatting and talking with them so whenever I would go to shoot and then edit a video an edited video I would just kind of be lonely (laughs) because because I wouldn't have people to hang out and chat with and so we started spending more and more time doing streams and focusing on streams than than edited content so that's kind of the biggest reason. Uh, and then when I started working for board game publishers, it became kind of weird to make edited videos for other board games when I'm very publicly working for a certain publisher. So we kind of kept that separate by me just not doing that and then now with haba i don't have time <laughs> i don't have time to do edited videos or, or anything like that so or streams or, or things like that so that's why we don't really do any of that anymore um also steve got tired of the studio being in the kitchen so same with us <laughs> yeah which is why my studio is now in the attic this is my attic uh 
we could definitely get Rhino Hero to the ceiling here. We could we could definitely do that. Yes. Before I worked for Haba, we made this space kind of a play space for our nieces and nephews when they came to visit because the ceilings are so low and, you know, they're kids, so they're still short. Uh, and so we had all the kids games up here. So we had all the Haba games up here already. And then when I got the job for Haba and I started getting more Haba games, we just kept putting them up here. And then when I needed to make a Haba studio, I was like, well, all the Haba games are upstairs and I'll be sitting. So that's how this happened. Move them downstairs. Yeah. Well, if we move them downstairs, we'd have to move our personal games. And we have way too many personal games. How many? <sighs> That's a mean question. Uh, it's not mean. Um, I think the last time we counted, we were a little over 500 uh in in the living room so we actually we have uh do, do you know what a china cabinet is a china cabinet a china cabinet no it's a it's a cabinet where you put really fancy dishes we're not fancy dish people so we filled the fancy dish cabinet with board games and then when that was too, too many board games we we added two shelves beside the fancy dishes cabinet and we filled those with board games and then we had big shelves on another wall and we filled those with board games. And then there was too many board games. So we got rid of all those shelves from Ikea and then we made shelves ourselves permanently on the wall. And so we have 16 feet of game shelves Whoa. and we have five levels and we still now have too many games for those shelves. That's a so, lot of games. We have a lot of games. We really like to play games and we like to play games with our friends. And then I help organize a convention here in Portland and we loan our games to that convention library. So if you come to the convention, you can play some of our games. Um, and so in addition to the games that we have inside the house, in the living room and kitchen area, those are the games we like and we'll play, we will play those just for fun. We have a whole nother library of games in the basement that we store in big watertight containers. And then we take those to the convention, but those are games that like we personally don't really want to play anymore, or we don't want to play them very often. Um, but other people would probably like to play them. So we keep them for the convention. Um, so we have, if you just count the games in our living room, we have about 500 games. If you add my Haba games, we're at like 650. And then if you add the games in the basement for the convention, we're closer to a thousand. So you have like... 900 games or we, we are, like we're, it's close it's nine, a little over 900 970 that would be close i don't have an exact count because i'm afraid to actually <laughs> have an exact count yeah. so yeah what is your favorite game <sighs> that again that's a mean one because there's i have so many favorite games i think my favorite one that I want to play, I'm going to go with what I want to play right now. My favorite one that I'm thinking of right now, because I have different favorites depending on, you know, number of players, all that kind of stuff, um, would be Steam, which is an older train game where you have to lay routes and then you have to build tracks to go to cities and then you pick up goods from the cities and you deliver them to other cities. That um, sounds like a little bit more... Like, it sounds like just a little bit more than Ticket to Ride. It's, 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 it's a little bit more, because instead of just playing a card to build the track, you have to pay money, and you earn money by delivering the cubes. Um, and there's also, like, some stock mar market stuff, but not a lot of stock market stuff. But it's kind of cool, because you actually... The, the board is, is empty, so it has the cities, and there's, like, a grid, but there's no routes, 
So like on Ticket to Ride, it, it made the route for you. Like this is how you're going to get from Salt Lake to Denver and you just play the cards, right? Yeah. Remember, in this one, oh, go ahead. I remember in your, um, in your Ticket to Ride teaching, you said you actually like trains. I do like trains. I like to ride trains a lot. That's one of the things when we go to Europe, when I go to Germany, I like to ride the train. So my coworkers, I always fly into a, a, a city uh, that has a very big train station. And then I will take the train to the city um, that Haba is in, Bad Rodak, instead of flying into the city that is closer <laughs> and then just driving. I like to take the train. Um, so with the steam game, you have the board and you have the grid and you, you know, where the cities are on the grid, but there's no, there's no tracks, there's no routes. And so you have to build the route that you want to get to the cities. So sometimes that route can be like crazy or it can be straight, but if you are like going over mountains, you have to destroy the mountains. So you need to spend more money and more time to build a mountain track right than if it was just like a field so it's it's a little bit more involved than ticket to ride um a little bit more math but you also have like a lot more that you can do that you plan and you figure out so yeah i really like that one um i know that you usually go to gen con like like every year you go to gen con Mm mm-hmm and this year you couldn't go to Gen Con, but what was the good side of not going to Gen Con? I know one of them was you could sleep in your own bed. Yeah, I got to sleep in my own bed with my own dogs. That was nice. I had I had nice snuggle, furry snuggle buddies. Um, I got to have my own food. I got to have my own. I had a kitchen and a, and we could cook beforehand, and so I had my own fridge, and I would just walk to the fridge. That was really nice. But I would say my favorite thing, the best thing about Gen Con Online was that we were able to have so many people come and interact with us and hang out with us at our booth or on our streams that couldn't make it to, to physical Gen Con. Uh, like they'd never been able to go to physical Gen Con or they wouldn't be able to go to physical Gen Con. And so they got to experience and come hang out with us at a digital Gen Con. And, and I really liked that. I liked that we got to bring Gen Con to hundreds of thousands of people that have never been to a Gen Con before. And they've never been to like a big convention like that before. And they got to experience the fun of coming together for games and talking about new games and, and that kind of stuff. Like I know you and your mom, you all tuned in to a, a few of our streams and got to hang out with stuff, which was I super also, awesome. I also saw how like when you were playing with the other side of Haba, the Germany side, mm-hmm. I saw your like little like how to make a game. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got to watch the, we got to do that presentation and we would normally do those presentations. We've done those before at, at real Gen Con because the German team flies in for Gen Con, but, um, it, we don't usually like put those online afterwards. So it was really nice that because we just did it online, everybody that wanted to could come and watch and you didn't have to worry about, oh, well, I'm not at Gen Con, or, oh, I wanted to do this other thing. And now it's all recorded, and it's available online. So you can go and watch all of the content that we made during Gen Con Online, including the play-alongs. So if you all wanted to open your Karuba and play along with past me on a video of Karuba, you could do that. All those videos are now on our Hava USA YouTube channel. So you could do play-alongs. And you could watch the game development stream with the with the uh, with the germans if you would want again so yeah i watched that because i'm making a game you're making a game oh do you want to do you want to tell me a little bit about it or my game is called mythology wars because it's based on mythology oh okay cool it's kind of like i got the idea from a series called The Heroes of Olympus from Rick Riordan. 
Yes, I know that series. The National Geographic works on that series or supports the series, or I think, maybe. It's the person who made the Percy Jackson series. Got it. That's why it sounds familiar. I read the Percy Jackson series back in the day. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I actually am working on two games now, but I'm hoping to start working on my other three games. Your other three games? You you have a lot of game ideas, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's making... sometimes good. Sometimes that can be hard because you you too many to focus on. My my games are um, forests, um, cities, castle crash, cities, um, heat version. <laughs> oh, cities of the sun. Cities of the sun and cities of the ice. I'm making some notes about these just in case. Maybe in the future. We do a design contest. Did you all participate in the design contest this year? No. Or not? You didn't know about it? We, I, so every year. No. No. <laughs> I every year. Maybe we, I've heard it somewhere. We do a design contest. And so every year starting in April. I want to say we um, open up the contest and you go and you order a kit. And so you get a kit and it has a whole bunch of like random Haba bits and we mail it to you and you have um, about two months to come up with the design. And then you submit the design to the contest. And, and um, then we, you know, we, we pro we read all of the submissions and then we pick semifinalists and then the semifinalists mail us their games and then we play the games. And from the semifinalists, we will pick finalists. And then um, the German team, normally the German team, we do this at Gen Con normally. When the German team has flown in for Gen Con, we take an hour or two and we play all of the finalist games with the Germans and then they help us pick winners. And then the winner those games go home with the Germans. They actually take them home with them and they get um, put into that pool of games that Hava uses to figure out what games they're going to publish every year. So the contest winners are, are in that pool and they could be um, published as a Hava game eventually if it makes it through all of the processes that the Germans talked about in that game development uh, presentation. Did you try to make games as a kid? I definitely tried to make games as a kid. Yeah, they were never very good. Um, I much preferred to play other people's games. So I would do like roll and write, uh, roll and move. So I would make kind of like my own versions of like Candyland or Monopoly or things like that but I always had more fun playing other people's designs than my own. So, yeah. Do you, do you play test a game on like a rough version so that you don't have to change a bunch of stuff that you did? Like say you did all the artwork and then someone says you should change it. Do you do it like that? Like a rough draft version or do you do it like an almost finished version? Uh, most people, when they do play tests and like the German development team, when they're, when they're making prototypes, they're very rough. They don't do the art until they don't like have the art made until they're like, yes, the game is perfect. It's done. We're going to publish it. Um, so yeah, we, we don't usually do the art or worry about the art until much later, much closer to when it's going to be published. So in every interview at the end, we ask a few would you rathers. Are you okay with us asking you some now? Yes, definitely. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. Would you rather lose your vision or lose your memory? It's a hard question. That's a rough question. I like reading, so I wouldn't want to lose my vision, but I also don't want to forget that I really like games. Yeah, I think I would, I would be okay. I would, I would lose my vision because I have a, it would stink, but I have a photographic memory. So I think that I could remember enough 
if I had my memory still, I would be able to remember a lot of things and what they looked like. And, and I, I would be pretty good at picturing what things looked like and things like that. So Unless I, yeah, people moved everything. Well, yes, I would have to learn how to navigate um, and I would have to learn Braille and things like that. But um, you also wouldn't want to be m- moving and then you like run into a wall. Yes, yes, I would I would I would learn to navigate, but I'd much rather lose my vision than lose my memories of all that I've done in my life. Plus how to play all those games that I know how to play. Yeah. Right. Would you rather have a see-through nose or entirely white eyeballs? <laughs> that is a very random question. I think that everyone, I think it would make more sense for me to have entirely white eyeballs because I could just wear sunglasses and I wouldn't freak people out as much. Whereas with the see-through nose, while I was wearing my mask, it would be fine. But every, every time else when I wasn't wearing my mask, I think it would, I think it would freak some people out including myself where's your nose yeah right well so it's see-through so is it like can you see into my like sinus cavities like Mm. uh, yeah okay my next question is would you rather always lose or would you rather never play definitely would rather always lose Definitely. I I don't win all the time. Because I would I would lose, but I would still have fun. Exactly. And just because you lose doesn't mean you lost like horribly. Maybe I lose by one point, right? So Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't mean that you like it's impossible for you to play well. Exactly. I could be playing very well. It could just be that my opponent is always one step ahead of me, which we have a friend that we used to stream with, John, um, and he almost always wins. And I still love playing games with John, even though he he always beats me. <laughs> yeah. um, would you rather be able to never sit or never or never stand Hmm. I think I would rather not be able to sit because I'm assuming if I couldn't stand I couldn't like uh walk and I couldn't snowboard oh those sitting on a ski lift would be hard but I could hike up the mountains so I think I think I would prefer not to sit because I could still paddle board. I just would have to kneel on my board. I couldn't sit on my board. We could make that work. You can lay down on your board. That's true. I can lay down on the paddle board. Um, yeah, but but not being able to stand, there's a lot of things I wouldn't, a lot of my hobbies that I wouldn't be able to participate in. I see. So. You would do that if you could fly. Either way, you could do that if you could fly. That's right. If I could fly, it wouldn't matter if I could stand or sit, I think. And if you couldn't sit, then you could just fly and your legs wouldn't be hurting. Yeah, exactly. I could just like hover around. That's how I would, that's how I would rest. What is the best thing about working in board games for a career? I think the people. I think I would definitely say working with all of the other people that are in board gaming because everybody that works in board gaming, they do it because they love it. Uh, you don't, you don't make a lot of money working in board gaming. Uh, and so it takes a lot of people that really care and really love board games to work in board gaming. And so it's really nice to, to have people that are just so excited about the industry and, and, they're all very helpful and we all work really well together, even though we might be working for different companies. Um, and so it's just a really, really good community that, that I have missed because normally we, we all hang out at the physical conventions. It's like a little traveling circus. Um, and so, yeah, definitely the people. Do you have any questions for us? For each of you, what is your favorite board game? 
See, it's a hard question. Yeah. That we have or ones that we just know of not have? I'm going to say you need to have played it, but you don't have to own it currently. So maybe you played it at like a friend's house or something like that. That's fine too. I think maybe... I think maybe it might be... um, I think it might be um, Marvel United. I think the last one was Wingspan. Or Scythe. Yeah, Scythe. Scythe. This one. The Rise of... Thanos Rising. Yeah. Thanos Rising. The Rise of Thanos. We're on a Marvel kick right now. (laughs) It changes every interview. Yeah, the same for me. Every time, every time people ask me that, it changes. So that's good. I think that's healthy. It's good to have different favorites at different times. I'm sure if I asked you in like three hours, you might have a different question. You might have a different answer then too. It's been really fun talking with you. I've had a lot of fun talking to you too. Thank you. I think this might be like the second best or the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somewhere up there. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I hope we can talk to you again. I hope that I can talk to you again too. And I hope that you all have a lot of fun uh, for the rest of your day and maybe do something fun this weekend. Um, I'm excited about your tree house. Your tree house is looking awesome, by the way. I saw some pictures your mom posted. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm looking. I'm, I'm a little jealous of your treehouse. Young me wished that my treehouse was as amazing as your treehouse. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. And hopefully at some point in the, in the future, we'll see you at a convention. But uh, if you want to come and play along with us, we actually, we're going to do UK Games Expos in a couple weeks. And we're going to do some more streams and some more play alongs. So what's an expo? An expo is, it's like a convention. It's just another word for a convention. Uh, um, yeah. So there's going to be another one online and we're going to do more online play-alongs and streams and you should come and play with us again or watch the stuff. Okay. I think that would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good. And, and hopefully by then you have your Karuba open and you can play Karuba with us. Mm-hmm. We should have our set done. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us on this episode of Kid Talk. It was really fun talking to T about Hava and a bunch of other stuff. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. See you later. Bye. Bye.